Excuse me. Um, is that a free gift? Oh, hello there. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Um, the sign says that there is a disclaimer. May I ask what the disclaimer is? Of course. If you wish to receive this free gift, I'm going to need you to sign a contract agreement. Contract agreement? Indeed. Specifically, a bilateral contract. I need you to read through it carefully, and if you agree to do these things listed, then you may sign and therefore be promised with the free gift. But if you fail to abide by these agreements, then you will not get what was promised. Do you understand? Mm. Oh no, wait, please, please, please. I won't break the promise again. Sorry, you got to go back to the booth to renew your bilateral contract. Uh, no thank you. It's not even a free gift anyways if I have to agree to those terms and sign a bilateral contract. I'll just go to the next booth. Yeah, I'll get a free gift there. Ah, what are you doing? Let me go! <laughs> Let him go. <gasps> Uh, anyways, I want to get the free gift. I see. Well then, the thing is, if you know that you're one of the elite or the chosen ones selected by God from the foundations of the world, then in a sense, you already have the gift. God predestinates the few who are elected beforehand to eternal life in heaven and everyone else to eternal damnation. Wow, um, then how do I know if I'm one of the elect? It's easy. First, we need to acknowledge that no one seeks after God at all since we are totally depraved by sin and God is holy and just. We are unable to respond to God at all due to our innate wickedness caused by sin. Therefore, God chooses specific people for salvation and that the individuals cannot choose God unless God enables them to do so. That's called unconditional election. As a result, Jesus Christ died for the sins of the elect only, and not for the whole world. This is called limited atonement. The elect will not be able to resist God's grace since they are God's chosen ones. I mean, who can? <laughs> Irresistible grace. Lastly, the one key point that I personally favor is called the perseverance of the saints. This means that those who are the elect will by the grace of God, make it until the end to confirm or prove that the person is really one of the elect. However, if at any point the person was to fall away and never come back to God, then it proved that the person was not really part of the chosen ones. But I know that I am the chosen one because of the changes that God has wrought in me to serve him as he has ordained. I got to admit, I may sin time to time. It's not intentional. Actually, it was all planned. God is the one in charge of my life. He sets things accordingly, every last detail. Even this conversation is planned by God. In a way, you can say that I really don't have free will. <laughs> Are you with me, boy? Um, I guess. So, when you said that you don't have free will, and God is the one leading you, but you say that you sin time to time, are you stating that God led you to sin? Also, if a changed life proves that one is truly elect, then how many fruits must one show to determine if they really are part of the elect, since you seem to know that you are one of the elect? On the contrary, how many sins must a person commit to prove that the person was never really part of the chosen ones of God? What standard for these things do you go by? <laughs> With questions like that, it sounds to me that you may not be one of the elect. How can you speak such nonsense? You just don't get it. Typical lost minded thinking. Actually, you must not be part of the elect, but are destined from the beginning of the world by God to go straight to hell. Guards, escort him out of my area at once! <laughs> Howdy, mister. You alright? Yeah, just a little scuff here and there. Say, that's a free gift, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. You can take it. Alright, thanks. Hey, 
Wait a minute, the guard can't just take my gift like that. I demand my gift, now. Guard, what did this man do to have the gift taken away from him? According to my sin detector, this person's thought a foolish thought. How outrageous! How dare you do such a thing! You did the right thing, gift guard. My pleasure. Oh, please, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I really didn't mean it. Can I please get the gift back? If you repent of that sin and don't do it again, then you can get the gift back. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I know I have a cheap watch that works, but I sure want that nice expensive one. This is ridiculous. I come to this free gift booth to get a free gift. These people don't even have a clue of what a free gift is. Man, so much for a free gift fair. Well, there's one more left to check out. I gotta make sure the gift is actually free. Hello there. I'm offering this free gift to anyone who wishes to receive it. If you want it, go ahead and take it. Wait a minute. This sounds too good to be true. I have to make sure he's not hiding anything under his sleeves. So, what's the catch? Any disclaimers? Contracts? Do I have to be a special individual to take it? Do I have to have a changed life? Or do something after I take it to make sure that I don't lose it? What's your hidden motive behind this? <laughs> you are funny. There is no catch. This is a free gift. No strings attached. It's yours to take and keep forever. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Friends, God's gift of eternal life is truly free without cost or obligation because Christ Jesus paid for all of our sins on the cross by the shedding of His blood. He paid the sin penalty which we deserve, mercy, and has offered to us eternal life which we do not deserve, grace. Unfortunately, there are groups out there within the realm of Christianity that think that we must do something to earn the gift, keep the gift, or prove by our actions that we really received the gift. Hence, the teachings of the Lordship Salvation, Calvinism, and Arminianism pervert the truth of the gospel of salvation and the free gift which God offers to us by His grace through faith in Christ Jesus alone. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 states, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I pray that you would understand God's true gift and that you would receive it by faith alone in Christ alone. No strings attached. Now is the time. No one is guaranteed tomorrow or even the rest of today. If you wait it out, it may be too late. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, as stated in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Trust in Christ Jesus alone as your Savior and the payment He made for you on the cross, and was buried and rose again the third day. See 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. If you do so, then you will not perish in hell, but will have everlasting life in heaven. Take care.